Good morning, I'm Gavin Nyman. I'd like to tell you about the conditions that can occur around the shoulder. Shoulder surgery is what is my main area of expertise and it's about 70% about of my practice. The shoulder is actually a complex structure comprising the scapula, the humerus, the clavicle, and with several joints. The glenohumeral joint, which is the ball and socket joint, and the acromioclavicular joint. There is also a joint at the medial end of the collarbone, the clavicle, called the sternoclavicular joint. The main conditions that we would see in the shoulder involve the rotator cuff spectrum. This is the area where the tendons around the shoulder, which encircle the shoulder and give fine movements to the shoulder, get inflamed. This, the tendons that inflame can circle the shoulder involve the, sub, the subscapularis tendon, the supraspinatus tendon, the infraspinatus and the teres minor tendons. So there's four, a group of four tendons known as the rotator cuff. Covering that is the area of the bone called the acromion. And this is the area which actually where the deltoid arises from and attaches to the humerus or the upper arm. The deltoid is what provides the power to the shoulder, but these other muscles provide fine movements. The rotator cuff spectrum is a group of is a, a inf area of pathology that can involve simple inflammation of the tendons, degeneration of the tendons leading to tears and then going on to develop arthritis. Inflammation can occur from people who have done over excessive overhead activities using their arm above their head, or just reaching for certain items. It often is pre genetically predisposed, and can be made worse if someone smokes, because this inflames the tendons in general and causes the tendons to degenerate. In the past, inflammation was thought to relate to the bone catching on the tendon, so that people who had a very narrow space a big spur would lead, uh, uh, would lead to inflammation around the tendon causing problems. Nowadays it's thought to be a combination of both this and also the tendons themselves degenerating, which is why if someone is smoking or is, is doing excessive uh, overhead use of their arm, this can be a factor causing uh, pathology or causing problems. The actual spectrum starts when a person finds that the, the tendon catches on the bone with certain movements so that they'll experience pain when they're using their arm between about 60 degrees of abduction or away from the body up to about 120 degrees. Above this movement the pain improves and below it improves and they can do certain movements down beside their body without problems at all. Above activities they're not so bothersome. It's still annoying to them but it's more in the middle range. If they have pain more at the extreme range of motion one would expect that to be relating to the AC joint itself, and this, this can cause arthritis. The AC joint can be associated with arthritis, which can cause pain. Patients who have inflammation in the tendons will experience pain typically when using their arm or when, when trying to sleep at night. And they'll find a gnawing pain, often felt with pain felt laterally down their arm. Pain in the base of the neck, going you know, to the top of the shoulder, or particularly pain between the shoulder blades, is more often to be related to the neck. And as such, May, may be a complicating factor because if someone's got a sore shoulder they will tend to use their neck more. Other cases people will come along to see myself complain of what they think is shoulder pain but it's more neck and I'll focus on their neck as a cause of problems and address this. When, when their shoulder becomes painful how can this be treated? Well as with most conditions in the body it's time. Most patients will settle the time. It's important to take away the infl inflaming factors so if doing excessive overhead activities, perhaps to calm back on that, adjust what they're doing and their technique for doing the procedures or what's, what's flaring it up. If they're smoking, I would strongly encourage them not to smoke because this is certainly a significant factor in causation or problems around the tendons. If time doesn't do it, then a course of physiotherapy is worthwhile. And we'd ask the physio to focus on strengthening exercises, building up these little muscles around the shoulder so that will help hold the ball away from the socket or the bone that's catching it. So by building up the smaller muscles, it helps retone the shoulder so that it no longer is moving irregularly and inflaming on the bone. It also helps compensate and re readjust the tendon themselves. So a holistic approach working on patient factors such as stopping smoking, if they're carrying excessive weight, would be a factor too, and by retoning the muscles it will help. If time and those factors do not work, then a cortisocosteroid injection or steroid injection is worthwhile. I know 
most of my patients come along with the idea that a steroid injection is a very painful thing, is a temporary benefit and may not work at all. In reality, the injections are not as painful as people think. It's a, what, usually we try it on one or two occasions, and it's a, if it gives a temporary benefit and, and wears off, well, at least we know we need to move to the next step. But in many cases, the patient will get a long-term, if not permanent, benefit from an injection. Something that's flared the shoulder up to cause it to become painful, with a step, simple steroid injection and retoning the muscles can help the shoulder settle down. In those patients that do not help settle with an injection, then surgery is the next option. And that's the way we progress. From simple measures to more mediate, to more slight interventional, such as an injection, for, and then for surgery. Just talking about the injection for a second, people also worry about the risks of the injection. The injection is a low risk procedure. It has very few complications, but one important one is the risk of infection. If a patient should get an infection after, after an injection, it could be quite disastrous. It could result in the patient having to go to theatre, have the shoulder washed out, and have to go on long-term antibiotics. This is something that always worries a patient, and of course it is important to take into account. But really, the incidence is extremely low. Uh, people quote, and it's impossible to say for certain, but people quote a figure of less than one in a thousand chance, which is extremely low risk, and it's probably even less than that. Surgery, again, if that uh, needs to be proceeded, we pro that is the pathway we go down. Uh, surgery is actually a straightforward procedure. It's my, one of the most common operations I do, and it involves actually assessing the patient. In the next video, we'll go through what surgery involves, but it's important to explain that surgery would normally involve an overnight stay in hospital. They would normally be encouraged to move the arm afterwards unless there is a tendon repair discovered, in which case they might have something undertaken and the tendon repaired, in which case they'd remain in a sling for a period of time. 